Hi, everyone. We're just waiting for our panelist to enter. Hi, Bala. Can you hear us? Are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so we'll just get started. We'll wait for about 10 more seconds and then just let the last few people to get on and then we can get started. Okay. All right, and this will be recorded. Um, so just going to wait for a couple more seconds and then we can get started. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, okay, so we're going to get started now. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to introduce Ballot for um, the first time here at for our webinar series. We did one back during COVID when the clinic was closed and that was a really successful week. So we decided to have this ongoing and today we're gonna to introduce Bala. He's our full-time physiotherapist at Cortha Care. We're very lucky to have him. Um, he started with us um, you know, back when we opened, uh, reopened in June and he specializes in so many different things <laughs> that I will touch base on, but um, he has been working in the physiotherapy field, has a master's and a PhD, both in physiotherapy um, and a master's in 2002, and then a physiotherapy, or sorry, a PhD in 2011. From what I know about you, Bella, you've already impressed me because you've continuously been learning in that short time that we are here. I think he's one of the record-breaking cl clinicians in terms of the number of courses he's taken. So he obviously has a vast array of knowledge. Today we're going to be talking about hip and knee OA and um, we are excited to introduce a, the GLAD program which we'll, we'll be talking about a little bit later in the slideshow. Um, it's the first time ever this program is being introduced in the city of Kortha Lakes and we're lucky to have Bala because he's the first person that's introducing it here at Kortha Care Wellness Centre. So without further ado, I will let Bala take over. Um, the last thing I have is um, if, to say is if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the Q&A and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So thank you, Bala. Thank you, Manju. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Bala, I'm a physiotherapist. Uh, Manju gave enough introduction about me, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, we can move on to the next slide. So today we are going to talk about hip and knee OA and how we are suffering from this in our day-to-day -day life and how this is affecting our daily functions and how uh, this is really affecting our quality of life and how to overcome that, otherwise how to manage, self-manage by ourselves by doing some good techniques and good exercises. So before going in detail, uh, let me talk about arthritis. So this is not a new terminology for us. All of us know what is arthritis, but there are two major types in arthritis. That is one is degenerative arthritis, other one is inflammatory arthritis. So we are going to uh, see in detail about uh, these conditions in the, the subsequent slides. Okay, uh, so this uh, picture uh, will uh, help us to understand, otherwise distinguish between a healthy joint and uh, an osteoarthritis joint. So if you see the healthy joint, uh, still the articular cartilage is intact, the menisci are in place, and we have a normal joint space. But whereas when you see that the 
the right hand side picture so that is the knee uh, with lots of degeneration going on where uh, the cartilage is lost the menisci are gone and the, the space is less between the bone ends which are causing more bone on bone and you can see lots of increased bone density at the end so this is a typical and classical osteoarthritis knee picture this is how uh, the x-rays with severe osteoarthritis um, will be looking okay and this is the one going to cause uh, uh, lots of uh, symptoms like a pain stiffness a decreased range of motion uh, decreased strength balance in some people impact balance in some people and finally affecting pretty much all the functions especially the weight bearing functions okay next slide please manju so this slide will give us some little insight about that inflammatory arthritis the major uh, the condition which we all know is rheumatoid arthritis which is one of the inflammatory arthritis and then some of us will be familiar with gout arthritis reactive arthritis and other conditions too but what is the main difference between degenerative arthritis and inflammatory arthritis uh, itis means uh, medically they say it's uh, like inflammation but in degenerative arthritis uh, there is no lots of inflammation in the initial stages as the disease progresses of course there may be some inflammation but initially there will be uh, kind of like the cartilage will be affected and slowly the whole joint will be affected whereas in the rheumatoid arthritis the disease starts uh, in the, the membrane called as the synovial membrane and the synovial fluid will become uh, affected so that there will be increased volume of the synovial fluid and this will cause a joint effusion of swelling and slowly this will affect the whole joint too which also will cause pain swelling uh, stiffness decreased range of motion and impaired strength and balance the symptom wise they're pretty much same but there is a minute difference in terms of uh, like a symptom presentation and manifestation usually people with uh, degenerative arthritis that means osteoarthritis they'll have uh, less stiffness in the mornings as opposed to people with rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, people will be having more stiffness in the mornings and they'll be lasting longer. Whereas in the osteoarthritis, the stiffness will be less in the mornings. They may not be lasting longer. And towards the end of the day, the osteoarthritis, people will have more symptoms like more pain and more, uh, they'll feel tired and worn out. Next slide, please. Okay, so initially we thought osteoarthritis is just a wear and tear disease because uh, the name implies um, uh, like osteo means uh, uh, like it affects the, uh, the bone. And uh, of course we know the, jo the joint surfaces, the bone, bone surfaces. And slowly it is affecting the cartilage. Mainly it starts with the cartilage wear and tear and then slowly it's affecting the whole joint itself. That means the disease is affecting the ligaments, uh, muscles, tendons, and then uh, even the menisci. So uh, we, we don't call osteoarthritis as just a wear, wear and tear disease anymore. And the recent researches are supporting that. So more than wear and tear, we are the, the joints are prone to develop the whole uh, uh, like it is affecting the, uh, all the structures around the joint so that we can call it as a joint failure. So this is the latest definition for the osteoarthritis. Okay. Next slide, please. So it is a disease that affects the whole joint, not just the cartilage. That one we should remember because many people will come and say, my cartilage is gone, my cartilage is like worn out. Uh, so that's what my doctor told. Of course, the disease starts with the cartilage and slowly that is affecting the muscles and the ligaments which are supporting the joint. Many people will be wondering how doing exercises uh, for the muscles will help in the cartilage healing and which we are going to discuss in detail in the following slides. Uh, even though the cartilage is affected, as I mentioned, the muscle strength will be lost and some exercises specifically called as neuromuscular training will help in decrease the slowdown of the uh, symptom development and decrease that the deterioration of the cartilages, which we are going to see in the subsequent slides. So the most common reason for is 
uh, many people think just old age, no. Uh, like uh, after, uh, of course, aging process is an, is an important cause, but not just the old age. Being inactive during the old age is the major cause. So if we are staying physically active, even though we are getting older, then we can uh, fight with this particular condition. Otherwise, we can control or manage, self-manage the symptoms developed by this condition. Next slide, please. So how common is osteoarthritis? It's, it's, com it's more common than high blood pressure diabetes. And this is a lifestyle disease in people older than 65 years. And uh, mostly this affects hip and knee and also it affects the hands also. And especially among the females, uh, hands are more affected. And uh, females also get knee osteoarthritis than males. Uh, among the males, hip osteoarthritis is very common. 30% of people aged 50 and over report hip or knee pain. 5% of all of them between 35 and 55 show some changes relevant to osteoarthritis in their imaging studies, especially x-rays. But uh, in the GLAD program, uh, we are going to see uh, education sessions. In that, we'll be explaining in detail uh, whether we have to really worry about the X-ray changes. I'm going to give you some examples, if time permits, in the subsequent slides. OK, so what happens in a joint with osteoarthritis? It's like a common uh, like a degradation process in our body, we all of us, we know that every day we are losing some cells, we are, uh, we are regenerating some cells in our body. So there should be a balance between degeneration and regeneration. If this balance is not maintained, then the degeneration wins. And if the regeneration and degeneration are maintained in a balanced manner, then uh, we can really prevent the symptoms getting worse in the osteoarthritis, knee or hip joint and how to keep them balanced. That is through the physical activity, that is through functional training, and that is through some core stability training, and that is through some lower extremity neuromuscular exercises. So this is what we are going to uh, teach you in a GLAD program. Okay, so the balance between the regeneration and regeneration through an active lifestyle is very important even though we are getting older because the aging process is a non-modifiable risk factor, which is associated with osteoarthritis. We don't want to reverse the age, but we can uh, really uh, do something to balance this process uh, that is regeneration, degeneration, which will help in controlling uh, the symptoms. And we, we don't have to take lots of pain pills uh, because of this osteoarthritis. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, this is a simple picture, uh, an X-ray for osteoarthritis of hip. So you can see there like a, a loss of joint space between the, the joint surfaces and the bony ends. And usually, uh, what are the symptoms people will have with osteoarthritis of hip? Uh, if anyone in the, in the, in the, among the participants experiencing hip osteoarthritis, they may be having pain, especially during weight bearing, for example, walking, standing for any length of time, and they may be having some decreased range of motion, especially into uh, some planes, not in everything, especially the rotation. Uh, they cannot like do a cross leg sitting, otherwise they cannot uh, like uh, a squat down past 90 degree. So those are the range of motions would be affected. And common, the most common pain sites are outer part of the hip and inside the groin. And sometimes this pain may refer down to the knee as well. And some people may report pain in the inner and outer part of the thigh as well. So these are the referred pain patterns for the hip osteoarthritis. The reason why we are introducing this, the people may be wondering sometimes, more, many people they'll come, I have pain in the knee, otherwise pain in the thigh, the distal thigh. Sometimes they may not be having any pain in the hip. So then when we explore, they may be having some hip osteoarthritis. So this is the referred pain patterns. Next slide, please. And about the osteoarthritis of the knee, uh, here again, people may be experiencing pain, especially during weight bearing, uh, like a standing and walking in the knee. 
anemia feel stiff and some people may say it's clicking and creating some noises especially when they are bending and straightening the knee some people may complain about giving way some people may complain about locking sensation especially when they are going up and down stairs and they may also have some decreased range of motion usually they may complain pain inner and outer part of the knee above or below the knee some people a few people may have pain experiencing pain uh, below the knee which may refer down to the shin a little bit not all the way down to the ankle but a little bit uh, to the mid part of the shin and the lower leg okay and next slide please yes this is an important part of the the webinar uh, so the little introduction about the osteoarthritis of the hip and knee <clears throat> Uh, with that, we are moving on to the treatment part. The treatment, uh, so what is the current uh, treatment strategy we are following uh, globally? So all of us, olden days, uh, the, there was no awareness about the, the therapy, otherwise only a few people will be agreeing with uh, doing therapy for osteoarthritis joints because people thought when we do exercise, otherwise when you go for walking, and the disease will get worse. Uh, because when you are weight bearing, you are loading the joints and the wear and tear process will be advanced and that will make the symptoms worse. But all the recent research has proved that uh, weight bearing is not going to cause any harmful effect on the osteoarthritis, hip or knee joints. In fact, they're going to help. The reason behind that is the cartilages, they don't have any blood supply or no supply. Then how they get the food, how they get the nourishment, they get nourishment only by exercising. For example, only when you're walking, only when you're loading and unloading the joint. The cartilages actually, they act as a sponge. So the sponge absorbs fluid and then uh, uh, like uh, depletes the fluid, separates the fluid. The same way the cartilage also acts. When you're loading, it absorbs the fluid and then when you're unloading, it gives the fluid out. So this is the way the cartilages are being nourished. And so that weight bearing exercises, newer muscular exercises are very, very beneficial for the osteoarthritis of hip and knee joints. So the first line of treatment for everyone who is experiencing these symptoms of osteoarthritis of hip and knee should go through first education. They should understand in depth what's happening in their body, how this is affecting their functions, and what is the reason why uh, they cannot sit in a low chair, or uh, what is the reason they are having pain after sitting for a while and standing up from that position. What is the reason they have pain when they're driving and they're going for a long drive? What is the reason uh, uh, they have pain when they are getting in and out of the tub, in and out of the car? So these are the simple things that will educate you when we are in the GLAD education program. So education is very important. And then exercise. What kind of exercise? Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, we are going to discuss about and we are going to demonstrate and make you perform neuromuscular exercises, mainly for the lower extremity, uh, strengthening program, and then functional correction exercises, posture exercises, and then uh, core stability exercises. And then we'll educate and teach you how to implement these things in your daily activities, daily life. And weight control, of course, all of us, you know, we don't have to go in detail about that. So these are the three major things which all the patients with hip and knee OA should go through. That is the first line of treatment. If these things are not helping, then the second thought should be the pharmacological management. That is, they can go for some passive treatments like injections or pain pills or any other acupuncture or any other modalities. But still, lack of evidence in that particular area. Only a few people should need surgery if they go through the first two steps properly without missing any channels. And only a few people uh, may need surgery, that is the joint replacement surgeries. And when we talk about surgery, people may have questions about what about house cleaning? It was widely uh, followed um, globally once upon a time, uh, like a scope, it's commonly called a scope, knee scope. Uh, they are not doing a lot of scope for the hip, but they are doing scope for knee. That is called as house cleaning. But nowadays, uh, most of the surgeons, they are not doing that house cleaning procedures. Reason behind that is lack of evidence. Okay, next slide, please. 
okay, what is neuromuscular training, how, how that is going to affect our joints? Everyone can benefit from neuromuscular training. And so neuromuscular training is when you do any exercises in the weight bearing position, we are stimulating that uh, the pain receptors, mechanoreceptors in the joints, and we are trying to strengthen the muscles. We are trying to increase the proprioception of the joints. And we are going to promote the confidence of the joint when you are uh, doing some functional activities like going up and down stairs or rising up from the seated position or getting in and out of the car or in and out of the tub or when you're squatting. So these are the benefits of the neuromuscular training. And th about this, we'll be talking a lot in the GLAD program. And also, uh, like we'll be training you to perform uh, during the program. And we won't give you any home exercise program. And this program is only active program. There is no modalities or no passive treatments involved in this program. Next slide, please. Okay, have you heard about GLAD Canada program? And I'm going to talk in detail about the GLAD Canada program now. Uh, the GLAD, the full form for the GLAD is Good Life for Osteoarthritis Denmark. So this program was initially launched in Denmark uh, in 2013, and then gradually it was initiated here with the, with the uh, measures of Bone and Joint Canada and Orthopedic Association of Canada. They introduced that uh, in Ontario first, and in the late 2016, they had to translate all the material, education material from Danish to English, and they introduced that here in Canada. They trained therapists like us, and they gave us certification. And we are implementing the program in the community now. So it's an evidence-based program. Already there are some pilot projects going on in Sunnybrook and St. Mike's, St. John's Hospital in Toronto. And it's a very successful program, very beneficial program uh, for people, especially with hip and knee osteoarthritis. So being said that, who can attend this program? Anyone? Uh, age doesn't matter nowadays. Even the young people, like around in their 40s, late 40s or early 40s, they're experiencing some knee symptoms. And people may say, doctors may say, you have osteoarthritis in the joints. Yes, they are also eligible candidates for this. And uh, the intensity of the, for, for example, the severity of the disease doesn't matter. Some people will say, I'm all, already a candidate for hyponia. <coughs> Excuse me, hip or knee replacement. Uh, am I eligible for this? Of course, anybody can attend this. I have seen people, I would say people like, this is a kind of prehab if somebody is going for hip or knee replacement because the rehabilitation process will be a piece of cake when they go through this uh, GLAD Canada program. Most of the surgeons in Toronto, they are recommending you go through the GLAD Canada program first and then come and see me for the surgery because this will enhance the rehabilitation process. And the rehabilitation process will be very easy and less pain after this program. And if somebody doesn't want to go for the uh, hip or knee replacement, even though they are qualified for this and they will learn how to manage the symptoms without having the surgery, otherwise uh, improving the quality of life without relying on the pain pills. So it's an evidence-based program. Uh, next slide, please, Manju. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, next slide. Yeah. Okay. So this, the total duration of the program is seven to eight weeks, uh, which includes two education sessions and then 12 exercise sessions. It's a group exercise uh, uh, program. And uh, because of COVID, uh, we are not doing this uh, you know, like in person in a clinic. We are doing virtual session, which is good. So we don't have to worry about the infection or anything. As I mentioned to you, as this program doesn't involve any passive approach, no modalities, no, no hands-on, no heat, no cold, anything. So it's more active participation, exercise program with the education so that this can be done at the comfort of your home, sitting in front of the computer, and I'll be delivering the program. People can come and participate. Uh, even though this is a group program, uh, the, the, the exercises are designed individual based on the individual needs. For example, it's tailorized for your needs, for your joint, for your strength, for your capacity, and for your tolerance level. Uh, uh, it will not be asked, for example, everyone should lift their legs sideways with five pounds weight. 
Some people may be doing it two pounds. Some people no weight at all. Some people may be doing more core. Some people may be doing more lower extremity strengthening. It's all depends on the initial assessment. Only for the initial assessment, we'll be coming to the clinic. And after the assessment is done, a brief introduction to about the gland will be given to you and what we expect and uh, what the program schedule, everything will be given to you. And what are the equipments you need at home? Even about that we'll be discussing uh, in detail during the initial assessment. The, initial, the idea of initial assessment is uh, to find out whether you are an eligible candidate for this program. And also, if you're eligible, then we'll give you the, <clears throat> the remaining education and the information about the equipments and where to buy or what the equipments you need. So I'm not going to tell every single patient you have to buy all the equipments or what is needed, but uh, you may be requiring a green band, somebody else may be requiring just a black, uh, sorry, red band, somebody else may be requiring only a low band. But everyone is different. So we are going to uh, make decision based on the initial assessment, okay? As I mentioned to you, even though this is a group intervention, but that is an individualized exercise program, the program is tailorized based on your assessment, based on your uh, outcome measure scores, which we'll be doing at the initial assessment time. So what to expect uh, during the program? Uh, you'll be learning how to control your movements and posture, and you'll be building the lower extremity muscle strength, including the abdominal core strength, and you'll be taught about the functional exercises which you can implement and incorporate in your daily activities. For example, how to squat, how to get up from the chair, or how to go up and down stairs. So those are the simple things we'll teach you. And this can be practiced every day in your life, and even after the GLAD is done. And uh, uh, one more little thing I wanted to add here. So it's again uh, like a research data a database they have the GLAD Canada program, and they are collecting data from all of us, like especially from the participants. They'll be sending email to you and they, after the initial assessment, and they may be uh, sending you some introduction email. And, excuse me, and after three months, they'll be checking with you and how are the symptoms, and after one year, they'll be checking with you. So that will help them uh, in research and development and also to knock the door at the ministry in the future, this may be a, like a government funded program. So that is the purpose they are collecting the data. Okay, next slide please. So what to expect, like what are the results after the GLAD participation? Uh, you'll have less pain in your joints and you'll be able to function in a better way and with improved quality of life. And of course, you don't have to rely too much on the pain pills. So that's very, very important. And in the Denmark study, they proved that um, uh, like, uh, uh, the sick leave absenteeism was very, very less after this program. And uh, so that, that was costing a lot in that country because of the hip and knee osteoarthritis. And so they, they found that um, uh, like the absenteeism because of the sick uh, was very less. That is one of the other added benefits from this program. And last slide, I think. Any questions, please? There's one question, Bala. Yes. Back. Someone put their hand up. Give me one sec, sorry. Just trying to find that. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Can't seem to find it now. Um, so if anyone had a question, I think that someone put up their hand, um, they can try to do that again and I can just see if that pops up. Okay, let's see here. All right, there we go. I think there's one question here. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much does it cost? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah. that. And uh, yeah. I think someone else, Jean, put up her hand, or I'm sorry if it's her or him. Um, if you do have a question, you can just put it into the Q&A box. Um, and I think Re Regina put up her hand too. So you can put that Q&A and then we can answer those questions in that box as well. So um, I'll talk a little bit uh, about the cost. So, uh, and if that's okay with you, Bella. So, yeah. um, so it is covered through insurance if you do have insurance benefits, uh, but you don't need 
insurance benefits to be a part of the program. So it's not a prerequisite. If you have them, that's great. You can use them. If you don't have them, that doesn't mean you can't participate. Um, and you don't necessarily need a prescription unless you would like to go through your um, extended health benefits. So the first visit, as Bala said, is an in-person visit, just similar to what he would do with a regular physiotherapy patient. And that is $75 for that visit. And that's an ass assessment to determine if you are eligible for the program. Correct, Bala? Yeah. And then after that, um, each visit is $37.50. So that would be how many visits there, Bala? Um, uh, four, 14 sessions, including two education okay. and 12 exercise sessions. So there's 14 sessions altogether. They are twice a week um, right. and are virtual sessions because we want to maintain social distancing and keep safe during COVID. Um, and we have already started the program and it's been quite successful, um, done virtually. Um, a lot of people are nervous about the computer and the technology, but that's what we're here for. So not to worry about that. Um, so um, altogether, the program cost is 600. And that can be broken down into payments. I'll just go back to, I think there was another question here where someone had put up their hand. So if you, if you put up your hand, if you want to just type in the question into the Q&A box, um, or I can, um, I think Jean put up her hand. So Jean, if you want to unmute your mic, you can also ask the question to Bala as well. Um, okay, so, sorry, Jean, sorry. Um, if you want to unmute your mic, you can ask your question uh, to Bala, or you can type it out here and I can uh, read it out to him. Another question while we wait is um, that uh, how many sessions? So you answer that, Bala. So those 14 sessions, so about seven weeks, right? Six to seven weeks. Seven to eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions, Jean or Regina, that had uh, put up your hand? Or anybody else? Okay, here's another question. I have a diagnosis of stage three hip OA, Bala. Uh -huh. I still need an assessment. Hold on. Um, so I'll read it again. I have a diagnosis of stage three hip osteoarthritis. Okay. I still need an assessment. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. All the GLAD participants, they should go through an assessment first because the assessment is not just to like to do the regular physical examination. We have some outcome measures which need to be completed. So that should be compared at the end of the lab program. And that will give us some idea whether there is any improvement. So they are the very basic evidence-based outcome measures. And also to uh, do the testings, the muscle strength range of motion and everything. And based on that only, we can suggest the exercises. If somebody is having like a, a very poor muscle strength, we cannot start with the, like a weight training program for them. We have to, the, the gradually we have to increase the resistance training. So that is the main purpose of the assessment. So it allows the, um, it allows GLAD to be then be personalized and individualized. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the assessment is um, necessary for that purpose. Yeah. Um, so Deb says, are there, are there specific times or days of the week? For so right now. Yeah, right now we are doing uh, Thursday evening, sorry, Tuesday evening, and then Saturday morning. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, right now that is that is how we are doing, but slowly it may change based on the majority of uh, people like of whichever time they prefer and we'll go with that. Yeah, so you can definitely request certain times. That's what we've been doing so far. Um, if there's, you know, an off day where, you know, let's say there's a birthday party or a big celebration you have to attend to, there is a makeup session or two that can be done as well, just in case. Yeah. Um, okay, so Pauline says, is the program run as a cohort or can a person start any week? Uh, the only uh, problem with that is the education session. Otherwise, they can join any time with the exercise session. Education session, uh, we would like to do as a cohort uh, so that it's easy for everyone. And then uh, exercise session, no problem. For example, if somebody's already uh, doing session five and 
and the person who is going to start session one exercise session can join with them but the education should be done at the same time yeah so i guess just to sum it up what we've done here at Kortha Care, because we are the only clinic that's running it in the city of Kortha Lakes right now with Bala, um, virtually and, and or in person, we're, we're the first clinic. Uh, we started our first cohort uh, November 1st. Is that right, Bala? Yes. Yes. So the assessment was done for the individuals and then we started. But we are looking to start the next group. Um, within the next few weeks as well. Just need to gather um, that group together, get the assessments done and, and get that going. That's correct. Um, any other questions that anybody has? Okay, so we have one person raising their hand. Let me just go back to that. Give me one second there. Um, okay. Q and A. Sorry, I'm just trying to look for that. Okay, so let's see here. So if that person can, um, I'm just going to allow you to talk so you can ask the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can ask the question. Yeah. So I think he is muted. Tavi, you, uh, no, I actually unmuted them right now. You can ask the question that you had when you raised your hand. Shit, come back. No. You want to bring that one? Any questions? No, not on there? Okay. Sure. All right. Um, okay, so we can come back to that. Um, just one sec there. Danny. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think Regina had a question too. Um, she or he had raised their hand. So if you have one, you can also um, feel free to ask if you'd like. If not, of course, you can always, you know, ask questions, uh, give us a call. You can email us, text us, however you'd like. Um, you know, if there's anything else, I have another one here. Okay. Um, all right, so so f we'll go into, I think we've got all the questions so far. So in terms of, let me just go to the next page. So you can book online um, and that you'll see on our, um, on our if you go to courthecare.com, you'll see um, the online booking, which is, which is very clear on the top right side of the page on our website. And you can book for the GLAD program there. So you would book for initial physiotherapy visit. You may also see initial GLAD, either or works for now. Um, and then of course, um, that would be an in-person visit, okay? Um, and that's how sort of you get started. You can also call us and I'll provide that information as well. So, if you want to contact us in regards to any of further questions or you'd like to book in for GLAD, uh, we ask by starting to book the initial assessment, which is what we're starting ASAP. All the assessments will begin um, you know, ASAP and then we'll get that program started within the next few weeks as a cohort, as a virtual group. Our telephone number here is listed. Um, so it's 705-878-8558 or you can email us at any point or um, you know, uh, book online, as I mentioned before. We love text messages as well, and you can do that through any of our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or, um, you know, you can also th do that through our website, and we do some live chatting on there if you are a text message type of person. So I want to wrap it up, um, but I do have one more. Right, one more question, yeah. 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 Okay, so Lori asks, uh, Bala, I have no symptoms. Can I still learn for prevention? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, to be honest, we are not going to preventing uh, the development of osteoarthritis, but we are going to preventing the uh, for the deterioration, for example, like we are going to prevent the worsening of the symptoms. So that that is the answer is yes. We can definitely recommend people someone even though they don't have any symptoms. So that will help them help them to strengthen their muscles and train their functional activities. Definitely, that will help. Yeah. And it's fair to say, like you said before, Bala, some people may not be experiencing symptoms, but they already have that development. And the disease. Yeah right? Um, and so again, the assessment would help with that. And again, those, 
you know, um, symptoms would be further prevented. Correct. Any other questions from anyone? Um, really good questions, by the way. Um, yeah. And any other, you can put your hand up if you feel like you wanted to speak out loud and, and ask follow-up questions as well. Okay. All right, so um, nothing right now, but I wanted to say thank you for joining us on our webinar. We will be hosting another one shortly as well. Um, and those will be talking about different topics and we'll send out a MailChimp in regards to that. Again, it's the first time that we're offering this in the city of Kawartha Lakes because it is very few and far between that people are certified and Bala was lucky enough um, and worked hard enough, you know, um, has got a certification that way. So it's, it's been awesome to, to see people attend this and, and have success with it. It is safe and socially distanced, so it is a virtual program done at home, doesn't require much equipment, um, based, you know, again, everyone's personal, so it's based on your assessment, but little to no equipment. If you do have insurance coverage, it still is covered through your insurance, despite it being virtual. So that's something that's evolved, um, and a lot of insurance companies are allowing that to happen now. We can help you with those with those questions about insurance as well. It's not meant to be like Bala said, a hard program or when people think exercise, like I don't know if I can do that. That's not the purpose of it, correct, Bala? Yes. Yeah. So it's supposed to be anybody that can attend it um, and help to prevent or strengthen, um, you know, those symptoms. Correct. Um, and then. Um, I think we have one last question. Sorry, I'll get to that. One sec there, sorry. Let me just grab that one last question. How many sessions are needed to complete the program? Yes. Four, 14 sessions, two education, all exercise sessions. And that would be about, you said seven to eight weeks, correct? That's correct, that's correct, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, we and Bala can speak to this more than myself, but it's been a highly successful, highly anticipated program that we've been working on since Bala has joined us. Um, and so it's been almost six months there. Um, and so again, if you do have any further questions, if you're interested in booking, um, if you want to leave your name just at the bottom of this, um, in the in the sorry in the chat or if you wanna call the clinic or text us, please feel free to do that. If you want to have sort of a little chat with Bala specifically and um, do a discovery call, which would just be you know, a complimentary call and, and just make sure to chat in with him and maybe have other further questions, we are more than happy to do that as well. Um, is there anything else, Bala, that maybe I left out or any anything you'd like to add? No, I think we have covered everything, yeah. Awesome. Great. So. This will be recorded and it will be shared on our YouTube page. So if you want to share it further with any family, friends, or relatives, we're more than happy to answer their questions as well. So again, thanks everyone for attending. We hope that you got a lot out of it and uh, we hope to see you join our GLAD program here at Court of Care. Thanks, Bella. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for attending. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.